Okay, this isn't going to be a tutorial or anything. I'm just going to give an attempt at creating one of these reflex sites here and uh, using just Blender, GIMP, and Marmoset Toolbag for texturing. And I'm just going to kind of take you guys along because I'm relatively new to art still, so I'm going to try to make something a little bit more complicated and just see how it goes. So I have two sites pulled up. Now they're different brands, but they're the exact same housing. They're just these little cheap knockoffs. It doesn't make any difference. So we have a view from the right side and a view from the left side. And we have a kind of an okay view from the rear, <clears throat> just enough to tell that the battery housing, at least that's what I'm assuming is, no, that would be somewhere under here, is underneath, or sorry, is kind of flush when you're actually going to be looking down at maybe a little above the glass. So that's going to be kind of, there's going to be some guesswork here because I don't have any good front images anyways, but it's not too big of a deal. Then we just have a reference to what type of crosshairs that come with it that you can switch between. All right, let's begin. I'm going to try to get some reference images. So let's go ahead and see what they look like. I haven't started on this at all. the right side it looked like eh, pretty good good enough anyways and let's get the left side try to view the front like this one a little better and the rear that's actually here's a good front shot that's a better one Okay, so only this one has the rear. And that's going to be probably my best bet there. So, we have the reference images. Go ahead and save this as a new blend. And start. So, here's the front view. Pretty much I want to have it whenever I go to this view. I want this to be the right side, this to be the front side, this to be the left side. So let's see. Go from the right side. So Shift A. Add a reference image. And the right side. That is massive. Actually, I should leave those pages up. See if they have any dimensions on them. So we can get a rough idea based off of the window. Oh, here it is. Well, let's see, we have 81 by 38 by 56 millimeters. So let's try to get a rough sense. I'll bring out a cube. So 81, actually. Be on the Y, so 81 millimeter. And 38, I would imagine, would be the width. So that would be the X axis, so 38 millimeter. And then 56 millimeters on the Z. And I actually, before I do that on the Z axis, I want to bring it up. In line and set the origin there. So then it was 56, right? Yeah, 56 millimeters. And apply the scale. So here's roughly the size. So I'm going to try to scale the image to this. And that's going to be roughly about what we're going to be going for. So there's the right. Let's go ahead and bring out the left. And I do not want to see this image from both sides. Let's see. I don't remember where the options are. It's a perspective. No. 
There we go. Only axis aligned. Nope. That's not it. Let's see. Oh, right. Sides. So this will be... There. There we go. So that's that. Let's go to this side. Add the other image. So this one is going to be the left. Scale that down. I have the other one at. Go ahead and change this as well. I'd imagine the images are about the same size. So I can probably just bring them right down. So that's at 21. This should be pretty close. It's a little big, so I'm gonna scale it in. Get just it, and get it just to the right. Or get just get it to where it's a uh, good left and right. Then bring it down. About like so. Okay, so here's those two. And we're good to go there. I'm going to move this on the X that way. I, don't want, I just want the rear. Actually, this one should be the front. Slightly big. Well, let's just get this. Uh, let's see. How big are these? So they're just a... Uh, they're a smidge from the top. Do the same thing here. Just get a smidge from the top. I rotate you a little bit. Kind of square it up some. Let's get it lined up here. Okay. That's pretty good to me. Same thing, we got to make it from the front. Move it on the y-axis. Then we do the back. That's pretty good. Move it a little bit over. I'd say that's pretty good. Move it this way on the Y. And here we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and just move these way out. Well, not way out, but decent bit out of the way. And begin. So here's going to be our low poly. Well, our block out. So I'm going to create a new collection. Select reference and drag and drop these images in here. And I want to disable their selection. So there we go. This is going to be the block out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with the mount, and I'm probably going to try to do this in a couple different pieces. So let's go back and look. Yeah, so the mount I'm going to do as a completely separate piece than the frame of the optic. And we're just going to kind of go from there. So this is going to be just the mount. So I'm going to drop it down. And get it pretty close. I'll just go from the front view. That'll be a little easier. Screw it up. Bring you in. Screw it up. Screw it up one more time, ever so slightly. Let's actually drop it down a little bit. Scale in on the X. 
There's that guy. And this one. And I think those are... Yeah, that's going to be it there, actually. So I can... I didn't need to do that. I can leave these here. And we already have the rough shape of it. So we can even take this up a little farther. Just to try to make it match a little bit better. So now I want to cut out the bottom portion here. Now let's see. I think it's going to be easiest if I go ahead and just leave this square, cut out the bottom, so that way our loop cuts are centered. So let's start there. We're going to loop cut there. One here. Screws are going to be separated. And I kind of want to make this actually a separate piece now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to delete this entire right side. So I'm just left with this. Let's start uh, shaping some. Let's see. We need to cut out this entire section here. And fill that base. Now let's see. Make a cut. I do not need you. Go and delete that face. There you go. Delete the edges as well. And start trying to work this through. Make another loop cut here. Cut here. Drag you over. Can't make a cut here because this is just a single face. Let's go ahead and subdivide down. And scratch that actually. I just looked at this. This is separate, so never mind. I'll go ahead and bring I'm having a hard time telling from the front view. It looks like it should go in. About like so, and you out. We're going to have some vertices we have to merge. So let's go ahead and merge them. And let's see. We need to fill in this gap here. So I could make a triangle and just kind of call it quits there. Let's see, how can I turn this into a quad? Uh, hmm. I'm trying to work with just purely quads because I'm going to end up subdividing this for the high poly. I guess I could just extrude you out. the face and that'll here we have a quad now we do the same thing for this guy down here z-axis the same x-axis the same and then fill and fill okay here's the basic cut out of it and we can move this to get it more in line. Thank you up. And I'd like to bring... Eh, that's not a big deal. No one's going to see that. Up this little area here, it's not a big deal. Not going to worry about getting this little bulge in here. That's not going to be necessary. And yeah, so now let's just go ahead and fill all this in. So I can click here, press F, and it'll fill the rest of the way through. And here we have a quick little block out of the base part of the mount. I'm gonna go ahead and shade smooth and auto smooth it. 
because there are some smooth cuts in. And now we want to work on this right hand portion right here. So this one's going to be the mount base. I'm going to add a new cube. Scale it way down. And apply the scale. All right, let's begin working on it. Let's move you over so it's a perfect fit. So better yet, let's create a slight gap just for the. Uh, it'll be nicer visually, I believe. Oh, screwed you up. And oops, move you over. Okay, still continue with that gap. Bring you down, screw you straight down, and bring you over. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do a loop cut and extrude you straight up. And move you over. That gives this kind of look to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and oops, select that base, drag it out, drag you out to here. And here we have the connecting portion, which looks like complete crap. I want to fill this in a lot tighter. Probably going to end up extruding up slightly as well. Let's drag you down. I delete you for now. Just extrude up. About like so. Then take this section, extrude straight up. And just begin oops, moving them over and giving them a rounded edge like so, shade smooth, auto smooth, and I got to fill in this top, edit mode, have to fill, and do I have back face callings on, if I auto fill it, back to back face calling, this face here is just inverted, so let me flip it, and there we go. So here's kind of the mount portion. Why are you in there? Name this to mount. Uh, what would even be a name for this? Mount clamp. And this one's called mouse for some reason. Okay. Let me make sure the bottoms are lined up. Now they are, and same thing with here, which they are now. Right, so I'm going to bring you up to match. Try to keep it just as close as I can. And I'm, I'm pretty satisfied so far with the mount. Now we can start working on the actual frame. That's going to be a block out of this whole body here. So I think I'm going to start from the back, work my way to the front, and it just extrude up and try to keep this, that little shape there I think might be a little difficult, but we will see. Let me just rename this to base, create a new collection. Call this one housing and create a new cube. Okay, apply the scale and we begin.
you actually bring you about here. Screw down. Extrude out. Have a quick extrude and bring it back. In which case I need to be easier if I just select you, bring you down, then move you back. Extrude all the way out. So the curve starts. Extrude. Extrude. Actually, you can always do those with loop cuts. So I'm just going to extrude straight across, like so. Now I want to add this cut here, extrude up to the top, get these close where they need to be, and I can just start shaping it downward instead of I'm trying to do a bunch of cuts going across. That's probably going to be a good bit easier. So let's move you back. And start doing some loop cuts. So about here where the curve starts, we can bring you in and just have you be pretty much straight. Two loop cuts here. To try to follow the shape. Add one more in. There we go. Now we got to make it wider and fit the outside curve of it as well. So better yet, we could do a mirror modifier. So I'm going to put a loop cut right down the middle. Select everything on the left-hand side. Delete all the vertices. Add a mirror, and it fills it right in, like so. That way we're only working with uh, one side. It's going to make it a lot easier. Drag these right over, just to kind of get a comparison. Uh, that's where we're going to go. Okay. I'm using the front as my scale. Then we're going to have to add a lot more, but we're just going to kind of adjust these to follow this shape. Which might be a little bit difficult, considering we're going to be selecting all the way back here as well. So what I'm going to do for this whole section in the back, I'm just going to hide all these vertices. Eh, I doubt I'm going to be selecting those. And we're just going to adjust. You in. A little more for detail. Oops, a little too far. Like so. Oops. So here's the glass, or the actual optic portion. It doesn't really have all that much lean back, but yeah, that's actually following pretty close to it. Yeah, I'm going to say that's good to go there. I'm going to Alt H done hide. Move shading. And there we are. So here's uh, most of it. I'm going to go into this view here, and we see that it does have a taper in. We can kind of see from. Ah, eh, crap, you really can't. But it does taper in in the back. So I'm going to try to mimic that to where I think it does, anyways. So I saw that page. Yeah, I do. So this one does it pretty close to the front. So that's, I guess, what that crease is kind of right in here. So that's where we're going to start the taper to the back. Now let me go to the mirror and turn on clipping so I don't have to worry about doing much else. And I'm going to move, actually put another loop cut right about here. So here's where I believe it starts to taper. So everything back behind it 
it will uh, taper. And to keep it even, I'm going to go ahead and delete these vertices here. Just simply connect like so. Okay, so now I want to select this edge and just taper in to match here, like so. So now I'm going to just go ahead and fill in. Like that. Go back to here. Add Go all the way to the right with the loop cut, then move it outward. So that's going to make that a little bit difficult. So instead, I'm just going to do a loop. Wait. There we go. So instead, I'm just going to do a loop cut where I need to, right about there. Move just that guy up to where it matches. So it's straight and it's nice and sharp. And there we go. And we have our taper into the back. And it appears that, that that should probably be marked sharp. Here and here. I'm just going to right click. Mark as sharp. So that where our shading. Oh wait, it's this one. Clear that one. And mark this one as sharp. You can kind of see where it wants to carve over like that. Okay, so here's the rough block out of the optic. Now I'm going to have to kind of figure out a way to cut out the glass here. So I'm going to make the frame, and then eventually I'll make a... I'm going to end up kind of duplicating and scaling, maybe, to get the glass to fit. So to do this, I'm going to select everything here in the back half. Add it just like before. Select all of you. Better yet. Let's drag you down a little bit so you're right where the cutout should be. There we go. Let's inset. Now well, that is doing that really ugly. Let's try with just the front faces. That's a lot better. So we have our inset. Let's scale it down by one jump. Okay, that did not actually. Maybe not. Inset. Okay, I'm being very dumb about this. Let me just select the rest in the back. That should do the same thing anyways. Inset. About there, left click. There. Do not know why that was that big of a pain. Now I want to press E to extrude. And press right click to keep it centered. Press S, then Y to scale on the Y axis. That's going to bring it kind of a inset it a bit. But I need to actually select these as well to do that. So I would have to make a cut straight across, which I do not want to do, as that would make a triangle. I don't know, let's see. Oh. Hmm. Okay, someone with common sense could probably figure this out pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and 
adjust these to where they make more sense. We got a lot here actually extra, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge our distance. So there we go. And let's go ahead and drag these down where they should be, keep them completely vertical. Okay, it's a lot cleaner. How do I figure this out? So I'm debating on what I want to do here because I do need it. So actually, I could probably just delete. And I'd like to use this strictly for the glass. And I could make two separate ones. Yeah, it might be easier to... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and delete them. So I'm going to select... Faces we just made like this, delete the faces, same thing here actually, and delete the faces, so there's nothing there, and simply drag these vertices all the way in, so they seal, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn off back face calling, that's getting kind of annoying. So now we have our hollowed out section, and we can go ahead and fill that. So let's fill it, like so. And now we have a hollowed out glass piece where we can actually go ahead and hopefully, I don't know how easy it's going to be. Actually, I'll wait till the end when we actually have it kind of done before I make the glass. So I go to the back for height wise. That looks pretty good height-wise, I'd say. Okay, so let's see. Let's go for some the rest of the components. So we have where it's attached to right here. Not entirely sure. This should be for the adjustment for elevation. That would be you. So that's just a spring for tension, I'm guessing. Then you adjust the elevation. You adjust the windage. So we're going to... I'll mod the spring portion of the high poly. That's just going to be a cylinder, cylinder, cylinder. These should be... I'm just going to bake those in. I'm not going to actually have them be as physical objects. These two will be. This will not. So we're going to be doing some baking to kind of get that detail in there. Let's see. I want to go ahead and make this section here, the little connector. Make a new cube. Find a scale. Not sure what in the world I just hit. Oh, I moved it to a new layer. There we go. I did it again. There we go. So let's set the height. So, go ahead and drag over, and drag over. Move this all the way to the front. Move it to the back, and there's that little section right here. Now we need some cylinders to fill in the gaps here. This one will have a baked-in spring on it. Let's create a new cylinder. You're going to need a little more detail than that. So let's go ahead and just bump you from 6 to 12. Or 3, let's do 8, because you're going to be an extremely small piece. Yep, way down. Out like so. And then just have it be kind of bridged right here and apply the scale. Let's go ahead and shade smooth. Auto smooth it. And auto smooth is not going to be enough in this case. Oh, I could bump the vertices up to 10 just so it to make it a little easier. So I'll just remake it real quick. Not entirely sure how to actually change it on the fly. Or even if you really can easily. 
Three to ten. We smooth trade it. No. Okay, let's bump up to twelve. There we go. Why are some of you? Okay, screw it. Fourteen. Final offer. There we go. That was annoying. Go yeah, way down. Not like so. And just apply the scale. It's going to fit right in there like so. Let's go ahead and uh, give these some names. So here's the housing. Here's the bridge. Go ahead and shade you smooth because it's going to be anyways. Here is the tensioner. Go ahead and move you over. Go you way down. Okay. Flat scale. You're going to be the... Elevation. Let's call it elevation rod. And then I'm not entirely sure what this guy here is for. Make it. Scale it up. Apply scale. Let's just call this one rear rod. I don't know what to actually call it. Okay. We have all those details. Now let's go ahead and create these here. I'm going to do this one first. Not exactly sure what would be a good thing to use to make that. That will just be a normal cylinder. And we'll just have a lot of marking sharps, I guess. We have a bunch of set inset faces too. Not entirely sure. Go ahead and create a cylinder. Let's bump these up to 24, since this is something that's going to be close to the player's eye, where they can see it. And we're going to go ahead and shade smooth. Get it right on down. Let's see here. Width-wise, get you about right. Better yet, I want to make it a lot easier to move you. Set your origin point to the center. That should make it easier. Up there, scale you down. Here, and apply the scale. Let's go ahead and screw you up, scale you down slightly, screw it up again, screw it up one more time, and then scale down. I wish I had a top-down view. Eh, yeah, kind of do. Not a very good one. So, let's see. Bring you forward a little bit. Because you're going to be cutting into the mount. And it seems like it does that in this. It's got a cutout for it. About like so would be my guess. And it goes height-wise up to the top. Like so. Go up just a tiny bit more, like that. Apply scale. I'd say that's pretty good. So we're going to have to add a Boolean cut here, and then I'm going to have to try to clean up the Boolean. I'm not going to be very good at that at all. And then i got to make this look nice. So I kind of want to do marking sharp. We would end up having a lot of detail in here for that. So I could just do every other face. See what it looks like as sharp. Uh, 
I had a flat spot, rough spot, flat spot. So I'm going to go this route. Okay, so you. For every third face. Going to be marked as sharp. Give kind of a little more aggressive look. And we have the remaining. I don't even know what these things are. All right. So it looks like we got to do. We do have to scale this up a bit. So I'm gonna scale it up. Give it back. Okay. Scale you actually down a bit. Back, not touching, and we're carving in there, that's fine. Go you down on the Z a little bit. I'd say that's pretty good. Let's apply the scale, and that's nice there. So let's see, I kind of want to go ahead and give it a try at the Boolean, I'm kind of curious how that's going to be. Change this up here. That should be the brightness knob and try to cut it out. So let's see how this goes. Modifiers, Boolean difference. There we go. So it cuts it out quite nicely. Okay, not really. And I did it again. I don't want to apply the Boolean to try to fix. Okay, so that does some interesting things. I'm just going to control Z a lot. Because I don't know what I did. Okay. Anyways, back to this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Add the original. This one's going to be housing, bool applied. Apply the boolean. What the heck? Because of the mirror? Okay, let me go control Z a bit. I feel like I overlooked something here. Okay, so here's a separate piece. Duplicate just the housing. Hide the original. Why do you suddenly appear if we're going for difference? Intersect. Yeah, union joins it. That is quite bizarre. Try duplicating you and just seeing what happens. Okay, let's make sure everything has scale applied. See all transforms. All transforms. Let's try it. That is really odd. Okay, making it a really aggressive cut. So, and just see what happens now. Go figure. Now it works. Let the probably scale it up a bit. So, bring you up. Move you in on the Y. Apply scale. And still. Okay, I'm going to look this up real quick.
Okay, this is actually, I guess, technically part two, because I'm a complete idiot, and I never actually unpaused it when I thought I did. So I went ahead and got the boolean set up, and I went ahead and recut everything, so we're all working with nice quads, no shading issues, but guess what? I never re hit resume, so I wasted probably a solid 15 minutes without recording. So for the sake of this, I'm going to actually, I guess, do it again. Well, let me hide that, and I guess it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to, just for the sake of, oops, looking decent, make these the same height, so it's consistent. Okay, anyways. Redo the housing, shift, you need to duplicate. Mod, Applied, Redo, and all right, let's see, we're using the Brightness knob. Which I need to scale down back to about normal, like so. The way I did it, I just scaled it up, so that way it's an even cut, because I want to leave it like that, so it doesn't have the, uh, another jump in it, so that way it looks just like this does up here. At least I think. And I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And you can kind of see where the boolean wants to cut. So the boolean is there. So we're just going to go ahead and I guess cut it out and do the exact same thing that I literally just did. I can't believe I forgot to hit resume. So what I have to do is I apply the mirror modifier. Then apply the boolean. Look at it. We can see the cutout right here. So I'm going to select it. So you want to merge by distance first. Select the inside, delete vertices, and here's our cutout. So what I ended up doing was I created, I completely separated this portion from the other half. So I'm going to do that again. That just made it a little bit easier. Uh, actually, let's start merging these first. Now let's do it. Select, change by selection, and just hide you. Okay. So I have to get all these back into decent quads. So I'm going to delete this face, delete that face, delete whatever that guy is there. Delete that entire edge, we'll remake it. And delete these faces. And we do not need anything to be marked sharp. So to begin, let's see. What I ended up doing was I added some loop cuts. So we have one, two, three, and then We'll have a fourth. Put these by height. Go ahead and fill these. That's already filled. Then here we have this guy, which we can drag or extrude out on the X, fill, and oops, fill to here, and fill. So whenever I get the other side set up, we're going to bring this in a little bit so it's not quite as weird of a, I guess, a shape change. I'm going to move you over as well. So let's start on the other side. you out. Oops. Fill. 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 Whoops. And fill. Okay. 
ring u, and u in, so scale on the x. Scale you guys out on the x, about like so. That way it, you know, it seems okay. Kind of a wonky face here. Let's see. So next up we have these two, which are not going to work for us because we have all these vertices here that do not really match. I'm also going to clean this up some. Make it a little bit nicer. Because of... Yeah, I'm just being dumb. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this. So we're going to do some loop cuts. We have to do three of them. Go ahead and set them up where they need to go. Like so. Same thing over here. Like that. As you can see, it adds a bunch of extra geometry down here, which we can... Uh, we can merge to a single point later on, but again, I want to try to keep this so that we can uh, easily, let's see, what do you call it? When we go to subdivide it, it'll form nicely. It's not going to have any annoying weird issues. Anyways, now let's go ahead and fill. And we can fill these across. Like so. Now we have all of our faces. Now I just want to clean up this back side again. Good to go. And there, those are now cleaned up. Now we have a slight issue with, I think, height, maybe. No, height's okay. So now we have, let's see if I'm doing a quick skim over, it looks like all quads, which is what we want. Now we got to kind of reconnect this back up. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill you. Go ahead and straighten these up. And we can try to bridge these together. So that's going to be a ugly section, but it's still... Actually, we don't need phases here if we're going to rejoin. We just got to set up ways to kind of recombine the back portion of it. Let's see, that was the, yeah, the redo. So we got to link this back up somehow and try not to add a bunch of extra geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a face or a uh, edge here. And does it have one in the center? Yes, it does. So we're good to go there in the center. I'm going to show both. So I can see. Okay, going to subdivide. So I have a point in the middle. And 
And I'm simply going to work this way. So we do have a triangle here. We could do one, two, three, four. Let's see. That's going to look ugly. But I'm really trying to avoid having any ingons or triangles for the subdivision. Again, I'm new at this. I'm not sure really much what else to do. I'm just trying to force quads until we get to the point, well, at least for the block out. And then whenever we go to optimize, I'm going to be, a ton of these are going to be turned into triangles. So we're going to drastically lower the count. So now we need to reconnect. We can select our newly cut uh, piece of glass and read control J to rejoin. Now we got to merge distance and it just occurred to me. Let's see, what are these right here? They're not on this guy. Why are they right there? I guess they're just leftovers from the Boolean cut. So we merge them just to get them out of the way. Merge that last just to make sure. And then we'll redo it. Control J. Now let's do a merge to so that way wherever we have these will be kind of resolved. Now we still have the issue of these guys right here, but I can't exactly take them over or do anything with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a loop cut here. And a loop cut here. And plug them in together. So let's merge by distance. We have this merged. Underneath has yet to be merged, so we have to add that to the bottom here. So we could actually clean that up a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So we have this guy here. Let's go ahead and at the very bottom, we're going to merge all these at last. We have, let's see, let's put one more cut here. If I do that. That will make it, so I could do two more. Well, no, I'm just going to do it so where it's right here and one right here and link those up. So I'm going to have to do the bottom a little bit. We can clean up the bottom some. I'm going to leave it as is. Go ahead and, again, just rejoin. Do the good old merge by distance. Go to the bottom. And we need a loop cut along this guy. Fit it right here. And a loop cut for that guy. Go ahead and merge. Let's go to the bottom. Hide the base. Actually, you could probably be too in the base as well. So we can go ahead and link some of these up. Like so. You to the middle. You to the middle. And you two back to here. So now everything is connected in place. And rejoined. And the only place that we have Triangles would be right down here at the bottom where no one's going to actually be able to see it anyways. So if we wanted to, we could really cut these short right back here. So what I mean by that is if I select the entire... Well, actually, no, because we have it up there. Could, yeah, so we're just going to leave it for now. And that'll be okay. 
So we have the top portion pretty much done. Now we just need, let's see, where's the brightness knob? Let me scale that down a little bit. Oops, on the Z. Like so. There we go, it's got the inset cut. Yeah, it could come up a little bit. Yeah, nah. I'm gonna apply the scale. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do this back bottom. I'm assuming that's where the battery would end up being. Well, let's go ahead and create another cylinder. I'm getting really tired. Uh, same thing, about 24. Let's like, yeah, we'll leave it at 24. Yeah, I want to move it. Again, just like before for the uh, origin point. And just crank it way down for scale. Rotate it 180. And put it about here. Okay. Just going to add the scale let's do no battery holder we're gonna make a fake little cap using loop cuts make that bigger and on the back side I'm gonna take it and extrude it out just a little bit about there, like these two edges on the outside, and make them flush there with that guy. So, as usual, it's got to shade smooth, and I'm going to leave this one as smooth, according to the image over here. And it's got a little round spot for where we would put or we would put a screw texture. So I kind of want to put a little dimple there. We're going to create just a small cylinder. A very small one. Just to give it some of that extra added detail. Rotate, set the rotation, and let's go ahead and rotate you like so. So that's going to be about, at that point I want to come straight out, so I'm going to actually put it right about here and get it in line with that edge so it comes straight out. There we go. By the rotation. Just gotta scale it. What'd that be? Okay, you do not want to scale on the local axis at all. Let's unapply the scale. Put it back to zero. on the X. It's going to be a really short stubby guy. Almost the rotation. There we go. Ah, dang nabbit. Go back on the X. Make it stubby. Apply scale. Repaste in the rotation. And there we go. Shade it smooth. I'll just smooth it. And now we have that little guy there. And I want to bring it in actually a little closer. So 
Move it in on the local x-axis, like so. Break it down some. Just a touch. Like that. And apply the rotation. So this is going to be our battery holder. And this will be our kind of our lock screw. So in the housing, I'm going to create a new section for the battery holder. Make these two in it. Create another one for knobs. Right and stop in there. And let's do another section for adjusters. That is not spelled right. So that's going to be this, this, and this. Like so. Okay. Oh, now let's see. I need that little... Let's see, what does that look like up top? So that looks like another Allen key. Yeah, that's what I'm going to assume it is. That's just going to be slightly... That's not going to actually be anything. That's just going to be stamped in since that does not protrude. This one's going to protrude, this one's going to protrude, and this one's going to protrude. So we got to put those in. So this guy here. So I'm going to be kind of lazy and just duplicate, rotate on the Y by 90, and just move it out. Okay, let's scale this up. Scale it down on the X a good bit, since it's just barely going to be protruding out anyways. Now you're slapped right on the face. Could move this in just a touch to make sure. Oops. And I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the back faces of all of these. Because they are not needed. That's just extra geometry that would have to be dealt with. This guy, if I can even select it. Yep, delete the face. I'm going to have to make sure that you are at the right height, which it is. Can't get under it at all. Okay. And I think I already did you. Did not fit your face, and then that is pretty much it for that. Okay. Now, in our base, we need to do some of these as well. So I'm going to unhide the base. Select you, duplicate, and just bring you down. Let's go you up just a little bit. the scale shift D actually it's not duplicated just yet so how much does it protrude it actually does a decent bit so about there will be okay we're gonna 50 drag it where this guy is and that's gonna be that so these are gonna be moved to the base It's going to be windage adjust. What's the rear rod? Okay. You. Not going to have one up for you. So there we go. Get back up. These are going to be lamp, bolt, rear, clamp bolt front. 
And didn't I name something a screw? Yeah. Okay. So here's what we have so far. I feel like I'm missing something. However, that actually looks like that's about it. See, in that picture, it's raised up. And we come up to this guy, it's not. So my guess is it's actually that adjustment is up a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and add one. I'm going to add this guy. I'm going to duplicate. And just bring it up. Not quite to that extent. But just enough. And I realize i got to flip it. 180 degrees. Apply rotation. That doesn't need to be nearly as long. doesn't matter. Okay, and this one's going to be the elevation adjustment, or adjust. Keep the naming more consistent. Okay, so I think for the most part, this is actually our low poly done. I'm going to leave this as is because it does kind of give the impression already that it is cut in, and I'm not going to waste a bunch of extra, well, some more geometry and all that crap just for cutting that in. So that would be kind of annoying in terms of effort. But here's our kind of our low poly optic, and we're at only 1400 triangles. And once we actually triangulate this, that's going to go up a good bit. So we're going to do some optimization once we get our uh, high poly and low poly kind of stuff set up. So I need to think real quick. I need to do the glass as well. So I'm almost debating on doing a loop cut like so. And then extruding it in. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do a loop cut. Scale these on the Y. Okay, those get drastically kind of pushed, I guess, if that's the right word. Oh, so that's that's okay. Now let's see. What to extrude? Scale that extrusion down. Let's make them all merge. Like just this side, like that is the last face. Merge at last. I was not expecting this result. So let's, let's see. So that just moved. Nope, that moved them all inward. Let's move these back so it's flush. Okay, second thought, we're going to do some adjustments anyways. Oh, whoops. Start moving these by on the Y. Okay, so that's pretty much, that should be perfectly straight. Which it is. Okay. That angle inward should not be much of an issue. So select all these, extrude, scale in. Out on the Y. Okay, that does a terrible job. Let's see, individual origins, maybe? Nope. Gradient point. Nope, that's what I was just at. Active element. Nope. Bounding box. Nope. 3D cursor. Whoa. Oh, almost. Fine. Not going to do that then. Let's just continue to scale this in. Oops. Let's 
individual origins, my bad. For this guy here, select the L, select that as the last, merge at last. Same thing on the other side, merge at last. Let's move that out, then move this out, like so. And there we go. Could move these up a bit, then select, push you out some, so you're back where you're supposed to be. And there we go. So this here is now our glass. We have everything there, so let's do a quick little look. So we're going to do back place culling. Okay, can't see through anything. Go inside. We have to, this inner band here we have to fix. We're going to have to flip these, so that way we cannot see through it. Otherwise, when we're looking through the optic, we're going to notice. So let's select that whole band. Flip the normals. There we go. So we do seem like we're having some... What in the world did I select? Oh wait, there is no basis there, then that's probably why. So let's hide these. Yeah, good figure. Go ahead and make them. Okay. I guess you're not going to let me autofill. Okay, and there we are. Back face culling. That entire ring is inside out. So let's select it. Oops. And flip it. There we go. So now when we go into the middle, in between the glass, it is completely solid. So there we go. I'm trying to think for the glass. Almost don't actually need. Actually, might be a smarter idea to not have. Oh, well, not have two uh, glass faces. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Well, whenever we actually get into a real engine, that's when I'll worry about it. Because for the baking and stuff like that, I don't really care to have that be actually baked. Actually, I don't know if I can even get around that, but I'll probably, I'll probably have to figure out a way. I'll just probably have to end up like panning out the normals or something like that. I don't really know how this is going to work. Okay, so here is our, what I'm going to call, complete block out. And that only took me, let's see, we're at 34 minutes on this one, so 50, 60, 70, 80. About 85 minutes. Actually, we've run quite decent for me, which is odd. Usually, I have a lot more issues. But I think it actually looks kind of nice. So, the only other thing I want to add is I want to make this extend all the way through because this is a screw point. Or a point where the, uh, sorry, the bolt runs all the way through and is threaded into here. So, if we look here, we do not. Okay. I forgot to add the detail on the right-hand side. So I want to add 
little this will be a faked spot uh that's going to be just visual you're going to be visual as well you're not going to have anything you as well because these are all places you're probably not going to actually look at and see i don't even know what the heck you are but i'm not going to worry about it anyhow i'm going to go ahead and take this and extend it out like so I can actually go just on the other side of it so that way it's we're not wasting any more actual detail instead we're we're just using what we already have so now I just gotta shrink it down so somewhere here in the oops in the middle gotta get a rough idea right here probably be about that size I'd imagine I want it to be lower where it's going so that's about actually about the height there okay. yeah that would be about correct so here we have our diameter I'm just gonna go ahead and move it back to about here just somewhere on the inside doesn't really matter create one more loop cut move it all the way out and move that loop cut this way. Then I'm just going to delete these vertices. Select that inner ring and just extrude it back out. And just get it close. So about there. And fill it. So here would be our screw. Uh, I might try to bake some threads into this. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. You're not going to see it when it's on the gun. Only if it's off of it. But I mean, hey, it's free detail. All right, so we have that guy, which they extend out quite far on. However, on these, yeah, they do actually go out quite a ways. So I'm going to extend them. That. I'm going to push these two out a good bit farther. About like so. So on you, I gotta take the inside, push it back on in. You, I just gotta move out a little farther again, about there. And there we go. So let's see. It should be just about all the detail we have to model the block out and I'm pretty happy with that yeah so the only thing I notice here is the little knob on the back has a little indentation in it I'm just gonna add that real quick that'll be very easy to do you can just what we can do is we can just uh, add a loop cut I'll do it all the way on the inside. I'm gonna select the outside, then the other outs. Whoops. Other outside. Okay, I'm not having any luck here. Yeah, let's undo the loop cuts. Just do them in the middle, select them, scale them. I can't really scale them in how I wanted. I'm being dumb here. Okay, let's just go right from the back. Loop cut. Okay, set it to increment. Increment out one. Set it to increment. Increment out one. Now we're pretty much even. Now I just gotta look. So they do have different back designs. Not just right there, kind of in the middle. 
I'm gonna grab these two faces and set them on the y-axis, about like so. Delete these edges. And I deleted the wrong ones. To delete the long edges. Wait, no. Okay, just the short edges. I got myself confused. So keep clicking. There we go. I oh, gotta delete both of them actually. Oops. Relink it. Okay, that was an ugly fill. We're gonna have a hard time filling here, so delete the long edge again. On both of these. Plug everything right back up. Let's see, so we're at the. I had a loop cut for you. Yeah. Maybe I want to snap it. Up here. Loop cut for you. Snap it about there. Oops. And fill it. And we can go ahead and fill what remains. And there's our little indentation. That took a while for that little thing. Okay, now I'm kind of curious on the whole subdivision part, or part. I want to try to get more detail out of this, but I'm not really sure if people just subdivide it and add support loops and all that kind of stuff or what they do. So I'm just going to kind of, I guess, wing it. We have all of these. I want to select them all. Like the... This guy is the last. Shift D. Control J. Break it out. And here we have the joint object. So let's see. Let's look at a subdivision surface. Okay, it's not actually that bad. Obviously, there's a lot that needs to be dealt with in terms of the support. I'm just going to kind of keep going with it. I don't really know what I'm doing. All I know is I'm adding a lot of loops. I don't even know what to do with this thing. Uh, I guess just keep... I want them to be kind of sharp. Here's where things start to break. And we end up with the issues that I have zero clue on what to do to fix. I 
We'll just get it close for now. Get the thickness up right here. And of course, that part's kind of broken. I have to say screw it and honestly just use the low poly and try to figure it out from there. It's kind of coming together. Just of... Some of the weirder issues. Okay, uh, what am I missing here? I did absolutely nothing. There we go. Okay, so for the most part, it actually looks kind of okay. Got to fix you. I don't even know what happened to the glass. Visually, I honestly notice not really much of an improvement. So I'm probably not going to go the subdivision route, and instead, I'm thinking I will probably just try to add bevels wherever needed, and instead do it that way so it'll be a lot cleaner, and try out hardened normals. So I'm going to just get rid of this guy. Quite disappointed with that. Select all. 50. Control J. Grab it out of there again. And just try to look at wherever it seems like it could use uh, some smoothing out. So we're going to add a bevel. Change mine to weight. And actually, let's do angle. I think, is that even making a change? Thought it would be over there. Anyways, back to weight. Go ahead and try to just whoa. Soften up some of these. Let's see. See what happens. Okay. 
drag you down a lot. Three for the iteration. I'm gonna change you actually the flat shading. Did not do any less. Yeah, I guess not. That I'm not too fond of. Is there a double edge here? Ah, oh, there is. That's Part of a slight problem we gotta fix. So I'll have to make sure to remember that. Now let's see, we could get rid of that by doing a loop cut there. So with that in mind, I'm gonna do a quick section. I think that would be probably it. Because everywhere else is connected. Yeah, so that's gonna be it. So we're gonna add a loop cut. This is kind of there. Change the height. Oh yeah, that's pretty much spot on. We do a merge by distance. Oh, we got fifty four of that one. Not sure what was duplicated, but anyways, now we have that good to go. Make sure I don't see anything really weird and wonky. Which I don't. Yet. Okay. I guess let's just start working on some details then. I need to think about what route to go for this. And I'm not sure if it would be good to leave it in separate parts or not. Or if I just should join them now or join them later because i do have vertex groups or the or the vertices are linked pretty well so like if i press l it's gonna be kind of whatever's linked to it where in the world do you go like the optic just disappears or the glass portion just disappears. Huh. That is a neat trick. Let me look that one up real quick. Never mind, I realize I'm dumb. I had the faces hidden. Yeah. Anyhow. Uh, let's see. To continue. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this all again. Control J. I want the glass to be separate, but that'll, that's not much of an issue. Yeah. As long as parts like this are separated, I'm happy. Which it is. And let's do a quick merge, make sure we're good to go. Now that issue's fixed, so let's see. We can start doing some nice little adjustments on areas kind of up here. So like these corners here can be beveled some. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bevel modifier. Just to weight. Like that edge and that edge. Crank the bevel weight up. Why can I not go down any smaller? Oh well.
Just smooth out some of the corners. They're not so rough. I'm going to do some of these things as well. Let's see, what else is going to be kind of smooth? All right, so this knob. Probably not the top portion, but at least the sides of it and the inside. Add a little bit of bevel to them. And I want to go ahead and make these blend a little better. Okay, that looks like crap when it comes down to shading, so I'm not going to bother. Actually, I don't know if shading really matters on a high poly. I have no idea. I'm still learning. I'll reuse some. Make you just sharper. Okay. Do we have any other hard edges? I know these Allen keys. I want to keep those about the same. Do a slight bevel. Up to like 0.45. Not like that. Then you, why not? Give it a little one. Point one. Better yet, they're going to be an extremely small amount, so 0 0.05. Give a little smoothness. Up here. Point 0.5. Same kind of deal. Point 0.1. So you'll probably be better off as flat because of the piece that you are. No, that is beveled out. 0.15. Smooth you out a little bit there. I don't want these down here to be aggressive like they are. And bevel out this bottom. Just, I guess, keep selecting the remainder of here. Look it out. Just so it blends. That looks terrible right there. Right there as well. It looks fine up here. Let's see. Okay, not going to do that. Uh, that would be a good idea. Just see what happens again. That looks a lot nicer. Blends in at the bottom. We just have those sharp cuts there, which are kind of odd. I would expect them to be more or less even. Reduce you back out. I have a disgusting shading issue here. Okay, still occurring. Okay, that was caused from you. We'll just leave that as is. 
I'll reduce you back down. Point oh five. Okay. Oh, so you have a bevel there. The other one didn't. So that might have been why. Eh, I'll just get rid of it. Not really that important to me at all. Especially considering this is for learning. So we got these little corners going, so that's okay. It really kind of help does blend that in a good bit better. I can just do just these two without it breaking something. Yes, I can. Do the same amount, like so. Okay, let's do a little less. Any bit more. I'd say that's pretty good. Alrighty, what else? So all this back here is pretty sharp. However, we do have... This with a slight bevel. Rear. I'm going to go with that route, I might as well continue the rest of the way through. And give that a nice bevel as well. Then I'm going to run through the entire bottom. And just give that a bevel. We are having a slight shading issue, but this is on the high poly, so it's not a big deal. Again, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly. Giving these a little bit of smoothness. Okay, on second thought, let's not. And this whole straight section, I'd like to... Do the same thing for. Like it looks like it has some decent machining. Which looks like it might have a bevel up top, but not at the bottom. So I'm going to remove the one at the bottom. And let's see. You know, the corners on like the front and rears, of the mounts are usually pretty straight. That's not really a concern. Is there anything else I'm missing? Okay, so I noticed a slight bit of different detail as well. So this right here, so this would be lower and then it would taper up in the middle. I'm not going to bother doing that. I just noticed that a little bit too late. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. So, oh well. A little late. It's not the end of the world. Uh, let's see. I'm sure that's pretty sharp corners. Yeah. I'll do the smallest one. Get a little smoothness. And that's pretty much all I can really think of, because everything else should be really kind of hard cut machining. I think that's pretty good. I uh, want to give slight bevel here. Just a slight one. And there it is. And same thing right here. So there we go. This is going to be the 
optic underscore i. So we're just going to duplicate. And currently, let's reduce that. We're at 3,861 triangles. I'm just going to take the segments, drop them down to one. So that way it's just a bunch of chamfers wherever I did the bevels. And then when I go to bake it, it should look a lot smoother than if I had, you know, zero segments at all. Like so. So that should yield a decent improvement just uh, just in that alone. And it's still good enough to where I can go ahead and actually bake out a uh, material ID as well. So that'll be good. Let's see. Oh, I'm exhausted. What else? really think that's probably it. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. I want to give certain things. I want to give that one a little bit of a spring look. Same thing with that. For uh, That one's going to be for threads. Let me rename this to low. And we're going to work on that right now. So... I'm going to go ahead and create a new mesh. I need, to do a, I need to do a plane. Go you way down. Okay. Click on the X. Add a screw modifier. Add the rotation. And we need to drastically reduce size. Let's scale it down on the Z axis. Scale it down on the X. Bring you back in. Okay, I have way too much stuff blocking my view. And I'm just going to select a bunch of crap. And hide it. There we go. So, move this guy in on the X. down I gotta go I go back this way on the Y that's pretty much even Let's see, select you, then select you, back and edit, and continue. And I selected the wrong one. This way? No. Then why don't you... Oh, there we go. Never mind. Okay, so we have that set up. Go ahead and move it actually out on the X a little further. So I'm gonna make this quite obvious. Do one more iteration. Look the side view. That's okay. Um, let's go ahead and. We're just going to do three loop cuts again. Try 
to round it out. That way it gets more of a spring look. And then we're going to crank up the steps in the viewport. I'm just going to bump this up to 50. Let's do 50. Say 50 should be good. And here's that little spring result. I want to move this up a little bit. Let's just scale it however we need. That kind of looks like a spring. And it's kind of right on the edge, which is what I like. You never want to rotate it. The way the spring ends are on this side here. Now I just have to fix that end and that is all. So let's go ahead and apply. Actually better yet, I should have did this before I rotated it. So we're going to go ahead and apply first, like the end, try to just flatten these out. Merge by distance. And just move it out. So it kind of gives that spring look to it, like so. We're going to do the same thing for the top. Merge again. Drag it out. Right back until they're hidden, like so. And there we go. May as well do smooth shading like for this as well. And it's not really much of a point. Anyhow, let's go ahead and bring the spring to the other side. So rotate on the Z axis. Actually, I'm going to leave it here. I think it kind of looks kind of neat like that. Okay, we have the uh, spring made. We're in there. For our baking, now I want to go ahead and work on our threading. So let's call this one a tensioner spring. Put this inside. Eh, I'm going to leave it. I need to make it uh, for parts though. So I'll duplicate it later. Same thing, let's make a plane. Okay. Set the rotation and the location. Did not mean to move it over to the X. So scale and rotation. Go to edit. Remodifier. Move it over. Use the scale on the Z a good bit. The heck did I do? I may have messed with myself. Let's see. Apply the rotation, the scale. Remodifier. Edit mode. Next. Oh, oh, one. There we go. Let's go ahead and scale it.
and give it a thread look. I want to rotate it. Yep, let's see. X again, and that's that's a start. Oh, let's go ahead and re-add the optic back. There we go. We have to drastically shrink the size of that. So we're gonna do that by simply moving that down like so. that up farther zero bump that up to five two there we go okay, so let's scale this up a little bit I do want a decent amount of space between the threads just so it's a more obvious uh, point out so if you do somehow see this that it is threaded now i gotta move down on the z to bring them closer together make it look like they're actually touching a little farther do it on the x there's the uh that's up there okay let's add a couple more iterations do one more. Yeah, we'll leave it right there. So this one. Lamp threads. Okay. Go ahead and I'll just do three again. Straight up. About like so. Give it a little point. And I want to shrink it actually a little bit farther. There we go. I'm 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 kind of liking that more. Okay, so there's our that'll look more like threads when it's actually baked. Now let's just do the good old test of base orientation and go figure the threads on these are not. So let's select it, mesh, flip the normals. Same thing with this guy here. Normals flip. Okay, so now we have the faces in the right direction. I'm going to go ahead and apply the modifier. There we go. Rehide you and try to fix. This issue. Actually, these are going to be hidden, so it doesn't really matter. Regardless, may as well. They're just completely hidden, so never mind, that doesn't matter at all. Now we just gotta I'm gonna go ahead and make these as normal parts. So let's see, that'll be the base for this guy. Be the clamp threads. So clamp threads, shift D. Come on, shift D. Why are you not duplicating? There we go. Move it out. And hide the base again. Do the same thing for the housing. It's going to be for the adjusters. So tensioner spring and adjusters. 
fifty. Bring it back out. At the housing again, and there we go. Let's go ahead and select that. Then the rest of the mesh and join it. Like these, the rest, then join it. And there we go. Here's our kind of our high poly done. So the only thing I can think of to do, I do want to try baking just to make sure everything's kind of okay before I go through and do more materials and stuff like that for the uh, material ID. So we'll give that we'll give this a try here in a minute. Right now, let's do the uh, look at the optic low real quick. I feel like I'm forgetting something on here. I just can't think of what it would be. Um, I have no idea. Oh yeah, unwrapping. So for right now, I'm not going to bother doing an actual good job at unwrapping. I'm just going to see what the smart project outputs. And that is, that's okay. Kind of curious. Okay, so that's you. And that's you. It's making, a, it's making okay use of the space. Could probably fit these inside of here if I wanted to. Not all that worried about it. All right, this I'm gonna go ahead and export. So file, export, FBX. site normal stuff uh reflex site underscore low do the high poly now underscore high save and close Okay. Big project. Load. You too. Flickers. Kind of tiny. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea just to scale it up, but oh well. Okay, we have that. Set our output. That reflex. Site. Just gonna do the normal. Uh, I think that's it. The bake. Go ahead and preview. See if we have any issues. So there is our threads. Here's our spring. Everything kind of has a nice bevel to it where it needs to, where it's nice and baked in. It looks very round, even though these are like just chamfered. So that's that's the reason you do that. I don't think there's really anything else I actually need to do. That came out surprisingly well. The only thing I might do would just be a uh, skew that up a little bit, like on the threaded portions. Where even is that? That is... Is that just you up here? I'd say it's a safe bet that that kind of made that worse. Eh, no, not really. Didn't bake the greatest for there, but again, you're not going to see it. And if you do, you're probably going to be looking at it from this angle. So it's going to look like it has threads anyways, especially once uh, once we get the materials on it properly. So we're going to have to work on material IDs. We're actually going to have to have two separate materials, actually. So one for the glass and one for everything else. And then whenever we're ready to go, we can just kind of bake everything. So for now, we're just going to... Drag this guy out and delete the bake project. I want to go ahead and do a quick 
look and see kind of roughly what if there's even any allen key brushes i'm pretty sure there are so there's some uh you i can barely see more allen keys those might be okay let's download both of these i know i need a phillips i get a round phillips as well Why not grab the one with the washer? I know we need a big flat head. So we have the screw slotted. Slotted round, slotted washer. Okay, so I have pretty much all the ones that I need. So I know these side ones, for example. That has a little bit of a baking issue right there. That can I think that can be resolved with the skewing. Anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna give that a try real quick. So I'm gonna add a texture project. Like my material up. I'll just go ahead and load up the normal. Is it? Okay, so it's right where the chamfer ends. So that's not that bad. But you can see the difference that it makes. So I'm going to give this a try. Add a new paint layer. Just try one of the Allen keys, see what they look like. So screw hex. Imagine it would be you would give a better result. To the right side. Up to thirty-five. Uh, Forty-three. Forty-eight, too high. Forty, oops, forty-five. Works out quite well. One more for you. Oops, back to perspective. And that looks okay. Yeah, this one, which one was this? Screw nut, screw hex. Oh, yeah, that guy. I feel like this round might be a little better. Five. Yeah, it's okay. I can see what it tries to do with the black around the edges. I'm not a huge fan of it. We'll probably stick with like screw hex. Then we'll have a giant screw slotted like up here. The top view. something like that and just alter the let's see oh change for here for here yeah oh well i'm pretty much done for the night so i'm gonna end up just picking this up tomorrow because i'm just wasting time at this point as well and i'll work on the material idea tomorrow now that i know that the bake is uh pretty good i'm gonna control z and see if i can bring the bake project back though I want to try and see if this will fix this little issue. Eh, not really. So I think that's just something that's going to come with it. That's not that big of a deal. All right, cranking up the At the offset as well. Oops. I 
Oops, are right there. Pretty much everywhere it is surrounding it, as far as I can tell. We can definitely get a pretty tight cage on this, I think, if we wanted to. But then, yeah, that's probably a little too close. Now we're having some issues, so I bump it back up. Even though it's a excessively high, we get some better results again, so. It's just going to be some trial and error here. We're going to do a lot of just tinkering to make things kind of, uh, try to make them look pretty. Anyhow, we have the, yeah, we have what I want here. I'm going to go ahead and sort these real quick. So, blender. Reference. I think that's going to break my images, isn't it? Yeah, because I can't find them. Path. This one's the right. Front. Back. And left. There we go. Save it. Close. Okay. I gotta go to bed and I'm about to pass out. So I'm just gonna pick this up tomorrow. And see where I get with it. Because it's been... I don't know about... It's been over well over two hours. Actually, we're pushing about two and a half to three hours right now. So, uh, yeah. This is just gonna be one long video. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it is the next day, and I had a really crappy sleep, so let's go ahead and continue this out. And uh, I kind of did a little thinking last night as well, and I want to do a slight change here. So we're going to end up having to rebake, which isn't a big deal. But what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my... Well, we're going to do the low poly first. Go into edit mode, vertex select, and uh, I have my screencast on. There we go. There we go. And I go to Vertex Select. And I want to select these two vertices here and just delete them. So that way it's a completely hollowed out portion where the glass is. I'm going to do an Edge Select to grab uh, this entire loop here. Press F to fill. Same thing here, F to fill. And let's just confirm that they are facing the right direction. And they are facing the wrong direction, so I'm going to go ahead and click here. Mesh. Normals flip. And I kind of want to do the same thing here. Mesh. Normals flip. There we go. Click there. So we have them facing outward. And the reason we have two of them here is to... It's for the direction that you're going to be looking at the optic from. So let's say your every optic is mounted on the firearm. Well, you want this face right here. You want this face to be facing you. So that way you can see the reticle. Because if you, let me hide this outside here. I turn on back face calling. Well, now I can see right through it, but I can't see it this way. So if we look through it this way, we can see the reticle. We can see whatever we've drawn onto the material. But if we look at it this way, we don't see anything. So if we go ahead and add another face here, let me hide this front one. We can't see anything from this direction, but it's blocking this view. So we're going to have the same material drawn right here. So we're just going to have them, when we go to unwrap it, this is going to be a separate material. And it's pretty much going to be just completely, uh, what do you call it? Completely, um, they're going to be intersecting, so to speak. So that's how we're going to handle this. And out of curiosity, is this lower at all? 
It does. I kind of want to. Didn't change it much. 101. I kind of want to drop the bevel down actually a little bit. Because if we look at the. Actually, let's just look at the distance between the uh, shape here. So it smooths out. I had to change U to 0.01. Yeah, so they are kind of intersecting. I'm just not a huge fan of that harsh edge that it creates. I'm going to do 0.05. That didn't really do much. Then just going back to 0.01. So I think no matter what, we're going to have that result there. I'm just going to leave it back uh, like it was, 0.01. Right, so, we made the change to our low poly. Let's do the high poly. Uh, Alt H to unhide everything. Same thing, just delete the vertices. Loop select, fill. Loop select and fill. And we're going to lip their normals they're blocking on both sides like so and we're pretty much good to go okay uh, let's see there's something else I wanted to do uh, I want to clean up our low poly so I'm gonna actually duplicate it I can even select it there we go let's do low or optic underscore low. Actually, let's change. Let's rename the old one. So optic underscore low underscore unoptimized. And then, and this one, we're going to be joining a lot of this detail together. So we're going to go ahead and apply the bevel. And then we're going to go through and start really kind of try to really clean it up the best we can so what i mean by that is merging verts together where they're not really needed so for example we could merge oops, these to the center and it would have no effect on our shading no effect on the geometry or anything like that and just kind of keep it going like so and we're going to really try to clean it up. So we're going to have a change here with, so right now we have 1100 verts, 20, however many that is. And we can also confirm, because we're going to have to actually triangulate. So let's add, yeah, let's add a triangulate modifier real quick. I'm going to add it to the high poly. Like so. Add it to the low poly. And this guy. So now we can kind of see what is going to eventually happen. So we can clean pretty much this entire loop up and merge them over. Same thing for the outside here. So I'm going to actually select this guy, hide it to get out of the way, and start cleaning up. So it's pretty much going to be merging all these to the center. And if we really wanted to, we could get rid of the center loop as well. But I'm not too worried about that. Just going to keep merging at last. Now this is why I bind certain keys to hot or to the uh, quick select. Because it makes it a lot faster to work through this. Oops. hide pretty much everything. And just keep working my way around.
Now we can keep it going, kind of... Actually messed that up. Oh, that's why. I didn't realize I had that one selected. Now we can also kind of cut some of these up too, so we don't have it going all the way across like that. First, I'm just going to merge them. But I can select like this, for example. Let's say I want to merge them all to here. I can do that. And select all these. And merge them up as well. And it doesn't really, at least as far as my eyes can tell, which aren't that great, it's not really affecting the shading all that much. Except for when I look at it from weird angles. I can see a little bit of issues happening. So if I undo that. And look again. Shading issues are kind of gone, but they're still somewhat relevant. So we're going to just reduce the extremeness of it. I'm going to merge them to right here. There you go. Let's merge you down. And we're do the same thing up here. Merge you here. We can take all these and move them in. Oops, I meant to do just this row. Pressing fill out of habit for some odd reason. Okay, let me go ahead and hide these faces real quick. We're going to keep this geometry here, however, we can alter it a little bit, just kind of remove some of them, and that'll clean it up a little bit, however, it's not really worth it unless we do this entire row in my opinion. And let's see, what else can we do? If we really wanted to, we could kind of get rid of some of these faces and merge them here. Oh, no, that would leave us with, eh, not worried about it. Okay, we've done pretty much the entire underneath. We can also, if we really wanted to, we could merge out this entire center. So underneath where no one's going to see, we can take this vert and just move, merge it right over. And because we're doing that, we can just merge them all over there if we really wanted to. Think of keeping it clean. It's going to go ahead and continue and get rid of the entire center loop. Now we have them merged over there. I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm just going to kind of leave them in the center because it's in a spot where no one's going to see anyways, so if there's any shading issues, which there doesn't appear to be anyhow, we're not really going to see it. So We've done the top portion, go ahead and unhide, I'm going to just invert, or not invert, but uh, change up what I have selected. start hiding some random things and I'm going to do the actual base part See if there's anything we can clean up there so we can get rid of for the most part this entire edge loop running it through and just kind of merge them to the corners so we can get rid of some of the pointless geometry because we don't need this up here for example so anyhow my food's actually done so I'm going to go ahead and finally have some breakfast so I'll be right back Alrighty, now let's continue cleaning up our mesh a little bit. Go ahead and merge these on over. I feel like there's a lot faster way to do this. So we have that section now. We can bring this loop cut up. No, no, because that's actually going to ruin 
how that holds its form there. So we're just going to take and move these guys up here like so. Or I'm going to move this one down. Go ahead and bring them up like so. March, whoever? No. <clears throat> okay, same thing. And I, let me think. I think that's probably everything on this guy. Which it looks like. So let's go ahead and move on to the next piece. So select you. Actually. Alt L, Shift L, there it is. Shift L to uh, deselect. Do the exact same thing. And what is this here for? Yeah, not entirely sure. Not too worried about it. Okay. I'm thinking that is... Let's see, I do see... Oh, this just has no face right here. Just going to go ahead and fill that. Wait, no, maybe it does have a face. Yeah, it does. It's just inside out. So I'm going to go to mesh. Flip the normals on it. Why does that suddenly break the shading? It's not in the point where anybody's going to see it anyways. I'm just going to leave it. Be a little lazy. And I think, let's see, move you over as well. Eh, same thing, it breaks the shading, so I'm just going to leave it over there. And that's good enough for this case here. See, let's unhide. Uh, there's not much we can do with this. We can take our line out of it. it. Isn't that big of a deal, but it's a super small change anyways. Everything else, I think, is about right. We can actually get rid of this loop cut going across like there. And go ahead and select, deselect you. Let's get rid of this guy. Now this is messing with the shading. It might be needed. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that loop cut in there then. Or that edge loop, sorry. Just to keep the shading like it is. And can't really think of much else. And we could get rid of the remaining portions of this loop here. The center. Cube back is sharp again. Oh boy, I need some 
But I'm not really that great at all this kind of stuff. I don't know how to fix it anyways. Really make the shading look a lot better when I'm actually doing this. So that's probably going to be <clears throat> it in my case. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's good enough. Okay, so let's see. Let's just do a quick comparison. So we are at 1925 triangles. So we lowered that by a little bit. So we brought it down by about 306 triangles. So that's good enough there. And now I'd say it's ready to go ahead and export. And we will go ahead and try to make the material ID. I think we're going to make the material ID using the low poly. That's probably going to be the easiest route. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. Add the old one. Let's call this one low underscore material ID. And start creating some materials. This will be just so I can max uh, certain things off. We're only going to actually probably have two, because it looks like, for the most part, oops, all about the same color, except the cap being a more plastic black. And same thing up here. This looks like it has kind of a rubber, rubberized finish on it. And then everything else looks like it's just normal, some kind of metal. So what we're going to do, go ahead and just select just the cap here. I'm going to select that for my selection. And select just these faces. And these are going to be, well, this is going to be my rubber kind of look. Go to new material, M underscore rubber. Give it a base color of blue. And hit assign. And Alt H. Actually, I did not mean to do. I'm trying to think here. Did I mess that up by chance? Because it's going to select everything by default. I'm just going to select. I'll try it again. Deselect. Actually, I can just take it and select all of that. Oops. Simply just Shift L to deselect. It should just be this guy, which it is. Sign you. Draw I. Let's create another one. M underscore metal. Do green and assign. Oh, Rubber is just that. Metal is everything else. Now I kind of want to give, let's see, I kind of want to mask this off. I'm going to select the entire thing. M underscore uh, red, this isn't the reticle control, this is the brightness. Red and assign. Uh, we definitely need to do the glass. Select. We're going to select both uh, panes. M underscore glass. Fine. Let's actually make it. I think you have pink. That's more purple. Okay, now I want to do the. Let's see, the screws. Well, we're going to go ahead and bake those in. I'm gonna make these, I kinda wanna have these be a metal but just a darker black. So M underscore be better. Yeah, these are bolts. 
do it yellow, assign, and then let's see. There's one more thing I just saw that I want to do. So this upper kind of half right here has a different material kind of on it. So I kind of want to, I don't know if it's worth trying to do the same thing. So I'm just going to make it follow this path and up, kind of like a cap. And then this would be the top cover. So I'm going to give, I'll give it its own material ID just so we have that option. This one's going to be M underscore. Uh, I don't know what that would actually be called because that's where the electronics are stored. Do electronic cover. Do a dark purple and a sign. Okay, so that, as far as I can think, should be everything. I'm going to go ahead and make these cylinders green as well. These are the bolts, so assign. And there we go. This is going to be used to bake our material ID map out. So we have to make sure we have the same UVs as the low poly. So it probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to actually unwrap this first. So we're going to go ahead and unwrap this one. The UV editor. I'm just going to smart project. And I want to have the optic or the glass here. <clears throat> I want to have this overlaid directly on top of one another. Plus, that frees up some UV space. So I'm going to select this guy, move just on the X, right position it as close as we can. That way they share the same UV space. Actually, can I snap? I think like the rotation's slightly off. I don't know why it would be, especially considering they're the, the exact same size. Just select some vertices, and we're going to make it just completely fit, all the exact same. Okay, so there's that. And I wonder if there's a larger place we could put this and scale it up a little bit. So it's a higher, it takes up more space. I could probably move you. Okay, you're connected to a lot of other things. As are you. So that's good enough for me anyways. I'm not really good at all this kind of stuff, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one and rename this one to optic underscore low backup. And this one's going to be our new optic underscore low. And I'm just going to delete all the materials except for two. I want to create actually a new one. So M underscore, let's do optic. and M underscore glass. Like, like that. So here we have our low poly and we have our high poly. So we are ready to go ahead and export. Export the low out. And the high. So 
hit the normal, and let's head back into Marmoset. And we can try to see what happens. Hopefully it works out okay. So I'm going to create a new bake project. And go ahead and load up our meshes. Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, that's right. I got to bake the material ID out. That's what I forgot. I'm going to export the... This guy here. Click site underscore material. Simply import. And here we have it. So I'm going to bake this material. I'm going to bake this to a material ID. So I'm going to create a new bake project. Select the optic low material ID. Drag it into the low. Duplicate it. Drag the duplicate to the high. Now we can start uh, actually work on our baking. Let's do target image. Reflex site. We're going to do just the material ID and we're going to go ahead and hit bake. And see what it baked out for us. Hopefully it's, you know, proper. You know, substance is a better, does a better job normally for this. That looks like it'll be okay. We'll end up finding out if there's any weird issues. And if there is, I'm just going to probably use substance to bake it out. So now that we have that, I'm just going to do a new scene. Bake project. Split up our high and low poly. And now we're ready to continue. So here's our high poly. Low. Okay. Yep, they are correct. And I'm just going to bake out the normal. So let's see. Bake it out to the same directory. Got the normal. And I think that's about it. Go ahead and try to preview it. We have our threads. We have our spring. Definitely rounded off the edges where I want it. And I'm not seeing any significant issues at all, other than just it's kind of, well, no, even that looks okay. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit bake. And here we have our normal map. So let's see what it looks like. Any, like, glaring issues. We got some really bright spots over here and here. This is part of the, the this is part of this guy, so that's not a big deal. That's going to be hidden, and we're not going to see any issues except for right here. So I think that's okay. So we now have our normal map out. We go ahead and just delete the bake project, or hide it, make that a little easier. Go ahead and import the low poly. Add a texture project. Let's go ahead and group these. EP for texture project. And we're going to load up the normal. And the material ID for the materials. I'm going to delete the default. I'll actually drag the glass over. And the optic over. Oh, no, because these are going to be... I want to bake these out differently and I think these are gonna bake out let's see actually let me let me check real quick I'm curious a new folder and yeah so that bakes out both of them and that's not really what I want so I'm going to actually make two separate texture projects. So I'm going to unlink the glass. Name this one to TP Optic. Create another one. It's going to be TP Glass. Okay, so for Optic, we have our Optic. For Glass, we have our Glass. 
And if I recall right, that's the only thing that's going to actually be changed is from the glass. So we don't have to bring in anything, whereas with the optic we do. So let's see, where to begin? Our, yep, that's selected, materials. Let's go ahead and just start laying down some metal. Let's go ahead and give a base layer, so where's normal steel? That's going to be a little bit bright for an underlayer. Uh, that's right. Uh, go to your material and just set it to pure white. That'll make it show more in tune with what's actually kind of it's supposed to look like. So that's with normal steel. I think steel brushed for an underlayer is probably a better bet. So I'm just going to say you to triplanar. That's going to be our base layer. I want to have this be the base layer for pretty much everywhere, so I'm going to select the color selection. Add new for pretty much everywhere. Add a little imperfection right here. Showing as a different shade of blue, so we can actually just color that in uh, if we wanted to. We should have everything, then we just want to get a rubber cap for here and here. So let's see. Might be better as. Plastic, just kind of move that out some for some rubber. It's going to be a very smooth, brighter colored gray. The bump that causes the graininess. Is that all in? That'll probably be in one of the maps then. There, that's a lot smoother of a rubber. More gray. I'd say that's probably okay. So we do have some issues with the material ID. It's still not, it still just didn't bake out quite in the way that I had hoped. So I'm going to actually, because Substance does an amazing job, I'm going to go ahead and just bake it out with Substance Painter real quick. Okay, and the problem with this is it's going to have, we're not going to be using vertex groups. I want to actually, for our material ID, I'm going to go ahead and go to vertex paint and pretty much do the exact same thing, but with the vertex colors. So selecting you. Fill up.
Okay, that selection looks good. Yep. Okay, let's do our glass. And now just everywhere else. I'm going to go ahead and reselect all of this stuff here. And then I want to select. I'm going to go ahead and give the base a different color. Do the same color. Look to you and then deselect or I painted the purple. Okay, and I forgot to deselect the optic or the glass. And there we go. So here's our gonna be our material ID. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Re export this out the material mesh, open that in substance, I gotta get rid of the materials actually, duplicate, rename this one to material id underscore substance, Just leave it with one material, re-export that out, load it back up in substance. We should have one material. Come down here to bake, use low poly as high poly. Change it to 2048, good ID, change it to vertex color, and bake it out. So here's our ID map. Let's go ahead and export that out. Right there, like so. And here's our color ID. So I'm going to reselect the color ID. That's going to be this guy. So now. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and give it a look. And there's a new color ID map. I see a slight issue right here, but it's only in that crease. So that's not much of a problem. So we'll just have to paint over that uh, whenever we get to it. Okay, let's add the base coat of metal. Brushed. Okay, I want to do the rubberized pieces here. I should have made those the same material I, or material color. That's not that big of a deal. 
train. I want to actually change all these over to triplanar. I want it to deal with seams. Yeah, there's a slight issue where it intersects there. So whenever it went to bank, but I'm not too concerned. That's going to be in an area that's really hard to see anyways. Okay, so for the color, I'm going to lighten this up a bit. Get more of a gray. A little more reflective. I'd say that's okay. So we have that. We have our metal base layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add anodized black on top. So, let's see. For the most part, I'm going to probably keep that the same. That's actually looks kind of close, just needs a little more graininess to it. Bump up the contrast a bit in the normal. And I'll probably actually just use this for the entire body. I like so. And for the screws, we're going to have a separate one. And I just want to, the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to darken it some. So I want to take the body, body, I want to make it not quite as dark, so let's make it a little bit more gray. Like so. So I have some issues where we got to paint in, so let's see, that could be the... It wasn't letting me select the color ID for some reason. Kind of right in between. It's not really changing anything, so... I'll have to work on that some. Bring it back to there. We're going to have to paint that in. Which isn't too big of a deal. Okay, so we have our body, we have our bolts. Lighten these up just a touch. They'll leave them a little darker. And I want to move on to the glass. I'm trying to remember how to actually make a glass. Oh, or, and a, uh, what's it called? Opacity. Uh, drag you to white. Hacker surface, no. Refraction? No. Transmission, refraction. A little transparent. Lower the roughness. Make it pretty see through. I don't really want any uh, opacity or anything in it. In it. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to think of how to... I think I can draw on this, can't I? Let's see, how would I go about drawing on, on it? So I would just do it with the fill layer. I might be able to alter it this way. Okay, so that does give some tint. We can go this route then. Let's try to lower the roughness all the way. And give it the tiniest bit of tint. Bit of blue.
and we just have a, it's extremely hard to see, but the slightest blue tint. Can bump that up ever so slightly. And I'd say that's okay. So I'm not going to add any damage or anything like that. And the crosshair that we end up adding to it is going to purely be uh, drawn on, or it's going to be added in the material inside of Unreal Engine. So let's see, we have all that. Let's go ahead and save this project out. And I want to bake in the details for the Allen keys here. Uh, I believe that was a Phillips. Yes, so Allen key, I think. I love a view from the top. No, I do not. No, I'm, I'm assuming that would be an Allen key because that should be the vertical adjustment. And I just realized I forgot to add in a little detail here, so I'll bake that in since it's so small anyways. Okay, so let's go to the right side. Add, this is going to be the Allen keys. I'm in the wrong section. Back to the optic. Let's see, actually, I think I can add. Onto the body, so it'll maintain the same color. Add a paint layer. Back you down. Can I make some changes? In that case, that doesn't work as I thought it would. I'm just going to create a new paint layer. The Allen keys. I'm going to use like screw hex was the more peeling option last time. It gives us that result. So let's darken the Veto. Not as much. Otherwise, I'd say that's pretty good. So I'm going to keep that uh, that color there for the, al the albedo. Bump the size up. Let's go up to 45. Might be a little big. 42. Go ahead and place it. And place it. There's those two Allen keys. We've got third one up here. This is a smaller guy, so let's go from 42 to 38. Pretty close. Okay. Let's come over here to this guy. I'm going to go back into his perspective for this one. Brush size, let's do 30. Okay, 22. 15. There we go. Change the... Add a new paint layer. This one's going to be... um. What do you call it? Phillips. Here's Phillips. We do have a flat. I think those are it that we have for the selection. I'm going to grab you. Copy. 
that value for the screws. Brush here, I'm gonna actually lower the hardness some, it's like 0.5. Okay, what does it look like with the hardness up? Okay, so I'm gonna lower the, yeah, the hardness of 0.5, bump you up to 16, or 17. And paint it. And that doesn't quite go over, that fits in there quite well. Okay, now we can give a little bit of detail to this guy here on the right side. Left side, I mean. No, we're just going to give this kind of a little divot. If that's really much of an option. Okay. Uh, none of these are really going to do quite what I want. We could just add square head and kind of see what that ends up looking like. Right, let's make it flat. No, let's use the Allen key. No. Yeah, we're gonna make another one. Allen ends. Copy the same value for the albedo. And just place it in. So I want this to be a good bit darker. Darker. And let's crank the roughness up some. And about there. So I want to make it a slightly bit, or a tiny bit brighter. I'd say that's okay. So, bump the size up to 20, 18, pretty much centered, and click. Okay, there's our Allen key for that, or not our Allen key, but our end. Let's go to top view. We still have to do this guy right here. These were... Let's go back to Allen keys. That's what we're going to be placing down. Five. Thirty-two. And place. I'm going to actually make that a little bit bigger. Let's try, let's try 35 and see what it looks like. That's okay, it did go a little bit over the sides. So we're going to go down to 34. And just place it in. And there we go. Okay, so now I kind of want to try to blend this in here to the metal as well. I'm going to try to make an underlayer for the rubber that has the same coating as bottoms. Let me go to body, color selection, and it. And that did not do what I had thought it would. We're probably going to have to paint. 
Paint layer. Really paint? No. I thought I would be able to just really paint. Unless it's because something's overlaid on top of it that's affecting it. So if I drag the body all the way up. No, that's not why. So. Get the paint layer. I'm just gonna duplicate you. Body. Corrections. Delete the mask. Oh yeah, of course now it fills it in. Oh, that actually did the job there. Okay, so that just kind of underlaid or overlaid everything to have the how, what do you call it? That metal base. But realistically, if I wanted to, I could actually get rid of the body. Okay, leave it like so. Bolts are still good. You create a new layer group. It's going to be bolts. Bolts goes in. And our uh, baked in or our normal changes goes in as well. Okay. Let's do a quick comparison again. Glossiness looks okay. However, this guy here is a little bit on the darker side, so I'm going to try to beef that up a bit. I'm going to shift D, or no, I'm going to add a new material, Give me the same anodized metal to this guy, and that's going to be the default setting, and that actually looks not half bad. I'm going to brighten it up ever so slightly. There we go, so it's just a little more pronounced. And I wouldn't mind doing the same thing actually for you just to kind of make it have a little more pop to it, so to speak. There we go. Let's see, I'm going to have to eventually put the numbers in. I'm not entirely sure how to actually do that. So that I'll have to figure out later on. Probably just have to kind of do a normal stamping them in. But for now. I'll make this aim logo. I'm going to try to do it in GIMP. Try to get the little right or the R and then E up here, I'd imagine. Or maybe that has nothing in it. I can't quite read it. Again, these are different brands that I'm switching between. And the right side, I'll probably leave empty. Let's try do some stuff in GIMP. Create a, we're going to want a square image, so I'm just going to do 2048 by 2048. Delete the background. Add a new layer. And I want it to fill in the aim here. So AIM. I'll just add some different little cutouts into it. AIM. Make it white. Better get that stilt up here. Old. Okay, now let's just try to get it positioned roughly close to the center. At the bottom.
not think that would bring that down. Here's our aim layer, or text. And we're going to end up making some changes to it. So I'm going to change the A out to an L. Okay, so I'm going to give it that look. And we're going to have the normal M. There's some different fonts. I have no idea what any of these are going to look like anyways. Yeah, we'll just leave it here. Okay. Now we are good to go. We have our aim layer. We can move it around how we see fit. Not entirely sure how to get it directly centered, but here in the Name layer. I'm going to grab the eraser. That way we can erase away certain parts. And I'm going to pull this up on the other monitor just so I have a better point of reference. Okay. Small brush. Full hardness. Okay, so starting from here, we're going to go straight across. Let's beef this up. M does the same thing. And that's roughly the AIM logo. Again, it's a completely different font. So we have that. It's pretty much solid white. I'm going to go ahead and export. It's going to be aim logo. Uh, let's see, what is it? Targa? What's Targa format? E something? Okay, that doesn't help. All right, DGA. Let me stop going to there, go back, or not. Okay, fine. There we go. No compression and export. I have our AIM logo here. Let's see, I'm trying to remember if we would make that a... I'm trying to remember how to actually do that. Make a new paint layer. A mask, I think we would do it. Where did I put it? Where are you inside of there? Here's the paint layer. And then, no, not in here. The layer. Okay, I'm trying to think. I think I'm missing something very obvious here. What is it to make it so I can select? Hmm. I know I can just do this. I can choose my albedo map to be a certain texture and all that kind of stuff, so I'd have that be white. That's not what I want. I'm trying to remember how, to, how I did the stamping. So I think that was just a new layer. Paint layer. With a brush. Okay, there we go. 
Let's make the albedo solid white, which it is. Rotate the down, check the angle, make sure jitter is set to zero. 180, 270. It's pretty vertical. We got to go a little bit farther on the angle. B, let's do 271. Seventy-two. That's pretty close. Now what I'm confused on is why can I not paint now? Get a sticker. didn't really matter. So I'm just not being able to paint at all right now. There's all the way up at the top. Hide all this. Eh, not able to paint. Nothing to do with layer, the layer order. Oh, there we go. No, I don't want any roughness. Up. Oh. In the world. Okay, let's try this just one more time. Okay, I'm at a complete loss here. Okay, so now for whatever reason I can draw on it. I cannot when it's up there. And then all of a sudden I just lost my ability to draw the albedo. That is a little confusing. So it is drawing, just the body is overlaying it. Move it up. Can't see anything on the rubber, rubber to the top. Okay, now for whatever reason I can paint. That's quite odd. That should be empty. Yeah. Okay, so now I can draw. Really weird. Change this to fit to brush. Click and draw. Set the brush texture. You can stamp the AIM logo. Make you white. Get rid of the remaining brushes. We're not going to go solid white. Because nothing is ever solid white. Change you the sticker. Angle to 272, I think it was. And view the right side. Let's see, size is about, it's about 180. Alright, I need to rotate a little farther. Let's do 273. 
73.2. That's pretty much perfectly horizontal. I can just kind of stamp it like so. That looks a little dark. So I'm going to bump it up all the way. Make sure hardness is at 1. And that's about right. Now let's compare the size. So I'm, eh, I'll do that. About, yeah, it's halfway up. And it's looking like it drew on the top here, which it did. I'm just going to now take the eraser. And just get rid of it. So here we have our AIM logo on the side. And I kind of want to move it, print something on the other side as well. So we can just kind of add another brush here. I'll just, I'll do the same AIM brush. Let's see, brush size. Let's do something small. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it. About, about like that. Oh, that looks okay. Now I have to make a little curve, an arrow, and an R, and a little dot. That can be done easy. Go ahead and make the R. Let's go ahead and just make it massive. So let's do 1200, 1600, that'll be good enough. Here's the R, but it's somewhat in the middle. And export this out. The R logo. Export. And we have our logo. Create a new folder called Stamps. Drag our aim. And our. Oops. Even our logo into that. Back into our set. Let's grab the R logo. Put 270. Right side. And we are. Okay, I want to lower that. Go to 180. And drastically reduce the size. Let's do 30.
15. That's about right. And just stamp it on. It's a little closer. Like so. I do notice some slight issue. Let me go up to like 100. So it's rotated over to the bottom edge here. I gotta rotate it a little bit left. So we're gonna do a little bit under 180. So let's do 189 or 179. A little too much. 179 and a half. And that's pretty much perfectly horizontal. Rise back down to 15. Damp the R. That's good there. Let's call these ones stamps. Now I need to go to top view and I want to do a... Let's see. I don't know if they would have anything up here. Because I don't see in these images. I'm going to try to find a top layer real quick. Actually, yeah, it was on Palmetto. I think one of these had a top-down view. Okay, so it says up. Yeah, so same thing as that one. So we're going to work on doing that. So I'm probably going to have two different stamps. I'm going to have one for the little line. Place two of them right here and here. And then have just an arrow. And then have one that just says up. So let's do the up first. Create a new layer. It's going to be up. Next, we don't need a new layer. Just hit base. Up. Select all of it. Go to 800. Okay, let's go up to 1500. Drop that down. 1400. And that's good there. A little closer to the middle. And here's our up stamp. Export as stamps. And there's our up logo. Export. Grab a new brush for up. Already placed pretty well. Looks to be straight-ish to me. I'm going to go a little bit to the right. So 180. There we go. And size-wise. It's not that big. So I'll bump it up to about 18. and stamp it. So there's the up. We need to work on the curved lines. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually make a, uh, what do you call this, an eclipse? Yeah, clip select. Add a new layer. This one's going to be around lines around line I got an eclipse position being zero zero let's see we're at 2048 so 1024 don't know why I didn't do that in my head
Actually, even those at zero with that the right size. I didn't think of that. That'll fill it perfectly. Now let's see, we're gonna do a border fill. Border, go to eight. Okay, we're gonna have to go a lot bigger than that. Go to 20. Good bit better. I want to shrink this up a little bit. So we're going to go to 20, 40. 40, that's not making any difference. 1900 by 1900. Oh, these aren't making any effect anymore. Let's create another one. Let's do... 1900, 1900. Let's do 80, 80. Actually, we know 50, 20, 48. There's 148 divided by 2, so 74. That should be perfectly centered. Border, let's go up even higher. I want to do 25. That's that's good. We're gonna do a, a bucket fill for white, and just fill it. Well, then we can grab our eraser. We'll go ahead and select none, and we just need a. I'm gonna do two of these. I want to duplicate this layer. Round line short, and this one's going to be round line long. So let's do the round line long first. Be right in the center. Oops. Here's a half moon. But this one's about a, let's say a quarter moon. Okay. Now I want to make that a straight line. And same thing over here. And here's our half moon. I'm going to delete this layer here. Duplicate one more time. Round line short. And I'm going to cut this about in half. So let's see. about a little under a half, so let's do it right about here. A little off, but it's close enough. And finish it off. So here's our round line short. Let's go ahead and export this out first. Let's do curve short. And then the normal curve. And now we need an arrow. We gotta create an arrow.
Go ahead and actually save this. Let's see. I'm trying to think about how to actually create an arrow. I could just draw it. Really a good route. Could rotate the brush. Forty five. Trying to get this top corner right there in the middle. Rotate negative 45. It's right there again. We got to do a horizontal line. From here all the way across. Down a little farther. And down a lot farther. And now we're going to erase straight across from the corner to corner. I have bucket fill. There it is. Is that one line below eight hundred? Right here. Okay, there's the triangle portion. We just need a... Yeah, that's actually going to be it. So, I'm going to move this to the middle. Go ahead and scale the layer up. Go to 2500. Put it about in the middle. Export this as triangle to targa. Do the same thing to the round line. Move it and scale it way up. Forty ninety eight. Double it. Place it like so. We export this one as curve. Same thing here. Forty ninety eight. And I had the wrong one selected. And 
at about there. Let's go ahead and export this guy. Curve short, replace, and export. Okay, let's go ahead and do the long arrow first. We're gonna go to the right side. Use the curve. The rotation. Go up to twenty five. It about go a little bit bigger, so about 308. I'd say that's pretty good. So it's about the same across. And I'm make this a tiny bit bigger. Let's go to 28. And stamp it about here. Okay. Now I want to stamp the triangle. 20. That's an ugly triangle. 90. Position and just stamp. That's that guy. Let's go to the top. Curve short. Back up to about 28. Actually, zero is not that bad. That's a bad at the bottom. So, close to here. Stamp. Gonna rotate some. Make it uh, kind of connect. So do that. I'm gonna move my mouse over here so I can leave it where it's at. That's pretty good. And it continues at the start of the P. I'm gonna just a little farther. Yeah, I want to do my own. Right over. Like so. And the arrow goes to that side. close. Let's bump this up to 8 and just stamp it. Let's move it a little closer. Yeah, a little too far off. And that's a lot better. Back to perspective. Here's what everything looks like so far. So now I just need to do the numbers here, and I guess that's brightness levels. Okay, so these pictures are different, they're just labeled one, or for the aim it's zero through seven. So they have eight levels of adjustment, so we need zero through seven. Well, let's create a template here.
Right there, zero. One. Two. Three. I'll go up to seven. All right, starting with one. Okay, there's zero through seven. And they're grouped. So let's export as zero. Control Shift D. Okay, that brings up a different shortcut in my case. Okay, now we just have to do a little dot, which will be easy enough. Right side, right about here. A square right now. How do I round you out? UV. Stamp it there, it's a little smaller. There's our dot. And starting from here, we're going to work on our numbers. Hit the brush. Zero.
Trying to get it on the flat spots. Which unfortunately misaligns it with the dot. That's not too big of a deal. Zero, one. This be two, then three. Four. Five. Oh boy, the rest are going to be kind of hard to hit. But we don't need to. This isn't animated or anything either, so it's fine. We do need the seven. Seven's going to go right there. Let's rotate it to nine and a half. And stamp. There we go. So the only things I see an issue with, I have the zero, one, yeah, just the zero and the one too low. I'm going to erase these. And just re uh, stamp them back in. Add the one. Okay, there we go with that. Let's look back at the image up here. So now we just have a large slot that we're going to want to try to stamp in. So let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and actually cut this out with a drawing in GIMP. So I'm just going to make a normal map in here. New layer. This one's going to be flathead. And I'm just going to take this guy. Let's make this bigger. All the way up here. Do down in the same spot. Using the arrow up top to kind of use the adjustment. And then I want to go ahead and try to fill the... Actually, let me do that first. Fill it black. And we're going to paint the white.
I'm trying to remember what it was under. There's something where we convert it to a grayscale. There we go. Color to gray. It looks quite terrible. So instead, I'm going to actually make, we're going to bake out a normal map using a blender mesh. Let's go ahead and create plane. Blender. Actually, right, what am I doing? So I'm going to take this, this is going to be what cuts it out. So I actually want to make a cube. I'm going to place the plane with a cube. Live on the Y. Doesn't need to be nearly as deep. On the X. Yeah, like so. Give this a Boolean modifier, and here's our cutout. and some ugly geometry. I'm going to shift D, duplicate the cube. One is not going to have that. I want to, have to go ahead and do this through Blender. I was thinking I was going to do this through Substance, so it's going to be easier to do it. Blender instead. So I'm going to go that route. I'll be right back. Okay, back to working on the normal map. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide 
our cylinder here. So I'm going to add a modifier, subdivision surface, add some support loops to the side, add a, another just to make it a little bit harder. Then we're going to crank the levels up. Go five times. And if we hide it, now we have a smooth cut right here. Unhide it. One thing I want to make sure of is where it... I want to make sure it's not going to intersect. I want to raise it up a little bit. Make sure we have some clearance between here and it's not cutting over the edge. And I'd say we're good. So now let's go ahead and hide that guy. Here we have our cube. Go ahead and shift A and add a camera. Get rid of the rotations and drag it up. I'm going to go up here, do a horizontal split. Bring it to the 3D viewport. And just drag this stuff on down, press 0 to go into the camera view, and here we can see it. So with the camera, I'm going to go ahead and change the resolution of it to 2048 by 2048. Go to our camera settings, change it to orthographic, and drastically scale it down. Actually, that's pretty much spot on, it looks like. You know, I can move that up. So, we have it positioned correctly. I'm going to go up here to the headers. Change the mocap and select the normal map. And here's roughly what it's going to look like. That looks okay to me. I'm going to go over to view, viewport render image. And this is about what our normal map would end up looking like. So I'm going to take this and export it. So file, save as. Go to stamps. Let's do flat head. Normal. Or curved. Flat head normal. Export as a TGA. Yes. Dot targa. And save as. So now, we have it right here, so we're going to go ahead and try to stamp that in to the very top. I'm going to add another one. This one's going to be the flat head normal. It's going to be just the normal map. The normal, we're going to click the flat head normal. Under the brush, and change it right back. We'll go back to UV. And that is not working as intended. Let's see here. First off, I want to make sure the image actually saved right. There we go. So it did. Make the contrast up. sure why you're painting the albedo as well. You should just be doing the normal. Unless I'm missing something here. I feel like I am. So let's, let me think. because I should be able to see it. Okay, but I feel like I'm being dumb here. 
So I want to go check, look into this real quick. Okay, apparently I was doing the exact same thing as I did in the past. I had it set to UV for the projection method. I want to set it to fit to brush. And I lowered the hardness to 0.5. When I click now, you can see the normal map detail right in there. However, we do have the issue of it painting black wherever we paint the normal. So we want to go ahead and try to fix that as well. So, not entirely actually sure how to fix that. However, what I'm going to end up doing is curiosity, if I rotate that back to zero. Yep. I'm going to try to get it to match roughly the color, as well as I want to cut out the normal map a bit. I want to open it up and try to get it without a background. So I want to pretty much cut, just remove a lot of this. I'm going to create a new base layer. So now whenever I erase off of this, like so, it's gone. Okay, let's try to get really close. Okay, same thing at the bottom. Let's go ahead and move the excess. We just have to deal with the outsides a bit. And that should be okay. Go ahead and export it. Normal cut. Oops. And when I click, that is a lot better. So we want to try to get the flathead to be within that little top flat section, which I'm actually struggling to see a bit. You know, let's try to just square it up. And it's going over, so let's decrease our brush. Let's go down to 90. And that is actually about right in. So 90, go up to like 92. Go top view. Try to just zero this out, and I'm going to give it a random angle, so I'm going to crank the jitter up. So now when I left click, for example, it, it's just kind of random. Click, and try to see it did a good job. So we're like right on the edge there. We're a little off from the edge, so we're, we're still pretty close. I'd say that's probably close enough where you're not going to notice. Out of curiosity, if I had an albedo... Ignore that. So, there's our little flathead kind of stamped in. Just that extra little minor detail. And, uh... I think that's pretty much about it. We have all of our normals. I'm going to go ahead and put that white dot there, and we've got to do the back side. So that's what we're going to go ahead and add. Now let's go to the back. We have a little white dot. Over here to stamps. 
Turn that off. Back to UV. So now when I left click, I have a big uh, dot. I'm going to go to the rear. 15. A bit smaller. 10. I'd say that's about right. Close to the center. And click. So there's that dot. Now we have to do the crosshair settings. We can have a little dot there. I don't know what that would be called. Circle, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to remake these inside of GIMP as well. But first, let's go ahead and do the little dot. That's probably about size 5. We'll have that be this setting. About there in height. And we would have another one right here. Another one right here on either side, so I'm, I don't know if I want to do all four or not. We'll see. All right, let's go into GIMP. Go to reopen these stamps. Actually change what targets open up with. Your photo viewer would be one of the first things right up there. I guess not. Oh well. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer. This one's going to be crosshair circle. Bring this up on the other monitor so I can see, but we're going to be doing this guy first. Okay, so we have normal circles. We're going to grab an eclipse. Go ahead and make it decent size, so like 1900. 1900. All right, we're going to have to center the position. So, okay, I already did it, so it's 74 and 74. Be centered. I'm going to add a very thick border. So select, border. Let's go up to like 35. There we go. I'm going to go fill that with white. We just have a tiny dot in the dead center. I'm going to grab a new eclipse. Drag out a somewhat of a small circle. So like 200 by 200 seems a little thick. So let's do 150 by 150. And I can't drag it, go figure. Uh, let's try a little smaller. 110 by 110. And go figure, it's selecting different. So 110 by 110. That's okay, let's actually go down to 80. There we go. That should be pretty close to the size of this guy here. We got to center it. So we have 80, 80, and the layer size is 2049 or 2048. So 2048. How do I do this before? Minus the size, then we divide it by two. Okay, so 2048 minus the size of 80 divided by two, so 984. The position, now it's in the dead center. And let's fill that white and select none so here's our crosshair circle I create another one this one's going to be crosshair uh, this one's just going to be cross and we have a simple cross with a dot in the center we'll do the same thing here so same exact size 80 80 Nine eight four. Fill it white. Go to our normal brush. To the hardness kind of there. 
I'm going to blur it. That's okay. So now starting from the top, as you can see my little, that little arrow up there by the thousand, that's kind of my baseline. I'm going to go from here straight down. About here. That seems a little off. Maybe that's a thousand the mark. Could have been wrong there. And that's a little that's a little big. Let's drop this down to like one fifty. So a little big. 100. A little bit too small. Let's do 115. And that's good. So from the distance, so from the center, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to go nine lines up from the left. No. And then go... up to about here. That's going to be the 250. 750 to the 250. Okay. Starting from here, we do, what was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right here. So one line below the next. That would be the equivalent of right there, I think. That should be right here. Then height. Right here. Okay, there's the starting point. And then for height, we did 250. Two so, one, two. So just two over. So, one, two. So, right here. Let's get the height back. There we go. Repeat to this side. It's on the hard line. Oops, so I made a mistake then. I need to go all the way to 1250, never mind. Click. I go one, two. That'll be to the one right below. Which that is. So one right below, right here. Set the height. Good to go. Go all the way to one. Right, right. One, two, one line before. Good to go. One down. One, two. Right here. So here's that crappy drawn crosshair. It really sucks. <laughs> I don't want to make this so solid though. I'm going to go and uh, do the eclipse again. 80, 80, 984, 84. Just draw on it. No, oh, that's not quite solid. Get a brush about the same diameter. Try a hundred. Let's get into ninety. That's pretty close. And just click. So that gives it a soft dot in the center. I actually want it to be a little harder than that. So I'm gonna go up to seventy six. Click. 
And I'd say that's good. Like none. There's that. That means I want to alter this guy. Eh. Yeah, I'll just leave that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. And we're going to work on the last crosshair, which is the one on the far left. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. Actually, no, let's just make a new layer and do it. So this is going to be crosshair. Circle cross. Go ahead and create the circle. I want this to be a good bit smaller. We're going to go to, what was it, like 1900 last time? Let's go 1500 by 1500. 2048 minus 1500 divided by 2, so 274. Right in the center. Let's shrink that down a little bit more. Let's go down to 1300. Oops. 374. That's decent. Let's go ahead and uh, do the same border fill. About 35. Just fill it. Now we need a dot in the center. So 80, 80. And 84. Now we need to do the outsides, so roughly the size that I had these at, oh, may have been 100. Drop the hardness down to about 60. Yeah, I think we may have actually been about 110 or 115. I think it's 115. Let's head back. This guy. Get on the very center. And for height, it's going to be right here. Go one line before the very end. Like that. That looks terrible. I made the outer diameter way too big, I think. It's the same thing. Centered. One line for the bottom. Eh, oh, mine seemed a little bit off. I got, I'm just kind of confusing myself, I think. That one's a little... I can't tell if it's any shorter or not. This line. And there's that crosshair there. And now let's save. And export these out. I could have just used this guy and just... Cleaned out the middle. Yeah, whatever. Alright, so let's export this. This one is crosshair circle cross. DGA for Targa. Stamps. And it's going to go right here. Create a new folder. Crosshairs. And export. Uncheck compression. Export this guy, crosshair, 
cross. And crosshair circle. Do a save. And that should be about it. So now we have our crosshairs, so we need to stamp those in. I'm not sure how far apart to do these. Crosshairs. Have the crosshair circle. And actually, I want to move this over. So I'm going to erase it. Enter right against the back. No. I want to put it back. Never mind. I'm going to draw the crosshair circle. No, the crosshair cross, which is right beside it. So like that. Let's bump the size up a good bit. Got about 20. Now circle, circle, or just crosshair circle, I mean. Up the size down to 18. Yeah, I'm going to have to redo that, I think, because that, that is way too big for the back of this. I'm just going to open those up real quick and uh, do the change. Should be easy, so I'm just going to be changing the outside. Let's add a new eclipse. Maybe like 1300. We can see what that one looks like because we do have this guy. I'm going to go down to about 1200, or let's do 1000. We have 2048 minus 1000. Divide that by two, so we have 524. Get to the center. Fill the border by 35. And just fill it. So here's that guy. Export it out again. Crosshair circle, and make sure that that looks okay. Oops, and I didn't mean to save it with the compression. I don't know if that really even makes a noticeable difference. We're at 25. I think that's okay. We're going to follow a similar size for the next, which is the circle cross, and bring it down in. Thousand. Five twenty-four. And I got to do these outsides again. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the eraser. Select none. Actually, grab the magic wand. Just select it. Grab the eraser and just clean it up. Brush. I think we're at 110. Centered.
and there's our cross. Okay, now let's draw that on. Gotta lower it size wise, so let's go to about 18. Yeah, that's okay. Let's go down to 16 actually. And draw it. Well, here is the back now. And I want to add a little extra detail. I want to put a little tiny dot right here. It's about the same. And draw it. Okay, so right now we have our... Our, uh... Yeah, what do you call it? Come on, brain. Our optic. And I'm... Pretty satisfied with this. This is my first time actually kind of going through something like this to completion. It obviously has some issues. Like I want to change this rubber down a bit. I want to darken it some. And that's all I can think of for detail. Do you want to put one more tiny Allen key bake into the right side? Let's go to the left view. It'll be right in line with this guy near the top. Go to stamps. Or no, let's go to bolts. I have the Allen ends. That's an actually Allen key, yeah. Let's just resize it to about half of what it's at. So 35, 15, 30, 16, 32, so 16.5. And stamp it. Now that's stamping quite bright. For example, if we look at it. So we want to darken this. A tiny bit darker. And stamp. Oops. There's that island key right there, the extra detail. We have our mount. And we are good. I'm quite satisfied with this. So now I'm just going to go ahead and export it out. And we're going to start trying to work on the uh, Unreal Engine settings. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the project. I already have some of the basic stuff set up for the Patreon project. So I'm just going to use that. So that way I can just create a new optic and plop it on a gun and see what it looks like. Okay, I'll just do it in here. Grab my reflex site low. Import. Here's our two materials. Now we gotta export these out. So scene, I'm gonna select my optic. And I'm gonna do 2048 for these. So reflex site, textures. Flex site and export. Do the same thing for the glass. Reflex site glass and export. Now for glass, we're going to have a different material set up. Uh, let me see if we can find one real quick. Here's the hollow glass, so that's set up 
with the alpha channel being the opacity mask, or sorry, controlling the translucency as it states. So we got to alter this some. Uh, we can add another, and we're going to do RGB plus alpha. Get the alpha to be, drop that on 2048. Let's add a new. It would be the transparency. So the alpha is going to be transparency. And uh, let's give that a try. So let's import all six of our maps. Open up both mix maps and uncheck sRGB. Create our material. So the optic. And plug them in. And here we have the body. Everything baked in nicely. Colors are showing up decently well. Now we're going to do the glass. Let's open this up. Change it to from opaque to translucent. Do surface translucency volume. I don't know if I want to do that for the optic or not. Let's see. I'm going to drag out the glass textures. Oops. Okay, I do not think that came out right. Yeah, that did not come out quite right. So let's see. I feel like it's something the way I'm trying to think. Is it the transparency? Go ahead and remove it. It might be the transmission mask. And that kind of broke that. Or maybe it didn't. It could just be one of those annoying little bugs for it. And it breaks it. Alright, so I'm going to try exporting it all. Re import. Okay, that did nothing. It is transparent. Or it's not quite that great. So I'm going to do a constant. And just leave it at zero. This will at least get us the glass look, like so. But if I wanted to have the little bit of tint, we bump this up to one. You can see the change. We're going to do like 0 0.1, probably a little less. 0 0.05. Save it. And we have just a very, very slight hue.
All right, I'm going to drag this out into the world because that's getting kind of annoying. So, yeah, we just have a very slight blue tint. I want to lower that just a tiny bit more, but like 0.2. And that's a little bit better. It's like just barely noticeable, but if you're looking for it, it is there. Now we need to add a crosshair to this. So we're going to have to create an image and overlay it onto it. So I did this in another project. I just want to look and see how I did the material to overlay the crosshair. I did it to the render target. Then we have our crosshair. We take... Okay, so we're just running... Not entirely here the setup I'm going to go ahead and create a quick one in gimp let's do 2048 2048 rid of the background create a new layer crosshair I'm just going to paint straight across This is going to be our temporary crosshair. Right, there's our crosshair. Let's go ahead and just uh, tinker with it. import there it is so go to our glass material I got crosshair in so I want to take it oh, but that's not going to allow it we would need an almost an opacity mask so we'd probably use this for the opacity mask entirely sure I'm gonna look this up real quick because I'm a little confused okay so I did a little bit of research and came up well from the result of this which allows me to get some a parallax effect as you can see there's the crosshair up there but it's not even close to lined up to the center it's off to the right if we come in here and look at our UVs here's the UVs for the glass right there. So I want to go ahead and because we're making a separate material anyways, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate UV just for the glass right here. And that's what that's going to end up using. We still have our two materials. I'm going to go UV maps. I'm going to add one. This one's going to be UV optic, then UV glass. Okay, so glass. I'm just gonna unwrap. Actually, I want to hide. Let's see, how can I delete the remaining? How can I clear out a UV? because I only want just the glass and I'm going to put them right inside of each other. Let's see, I'm going to look up how to do that real quick. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure if I understood this right, but I'm going to go ahead and just hide everything else. I went ahead and re-unwrapped for 
a second UV map. Name that back to glass. I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it. They're both in the same. About as close as it's going to probably get. And doing the same thing again. So it's the farther one. That kind of doesn't look quite right. Undo it. I'll leave these as separate. They're taking up enough space in the UV anyway, so I think that'll be more than fine. Just to give them a tiny gap. Okay, those... Okay, no. That stretches it, so I'm going to leave it. So let's see, roughly... I guess what this is going to look like. I'm hoping... I set you to use a certain UV. Okay, so for some reason I was being dumb, but I ended up getting it to work just fine. At least without a... We're pretty much just drawing right on the glass directly. So, whoops. What I ended up doing was just taking both UVs and moving them directly to the center, scaling them up, because again, they're on their own material. It doesn't really matter. Then went ahead and exported, and now we are set up. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete the crosshair test texture. I'll delete U first. U, force delete. And I went ahead and made a little red dot texture. It's literally just a red dot in the center. Go back to the glass material. Select the red dot texture. Hit save. I'll see it in, there it is. Now we come back to it. We have a little dot. So we can control, pretty much control it that way. So I went ahead and as well created the attachment to work with the basic weapon system. And it is there, but it's currently way too high. And to work with at least my system anyways. Okay, I just realized I accidentally hit my stop recording key, but as I was saying, uh, I already did this off recording because again, I actually messed that up. But I lower the mount up. So that way it's kind of about the right height for the mount to the top of the rail. So all I did was simply take it to where the lat spot is, where it will be resting on the top of the rail. And that's the origin point for the height. And that gave it a much more appropriate uh, height for here. So the only thing I would do is I would probably come in, again, if that was for a... This was for like an actual project. I would take it and I would probably cut, trim down the mount some so it's not not as beefy. And then I would, actually that would probably be it because the rest of the gap is still pretty good. 
So yeah, I'd probably just cut the mount down a little bit so, and drag it down so that way it's not as tall. And then that would probably do a good job at filling or putting it right in line with the front sight. That as well as the uh, the dot itself is up a little high, so I'm just going to lower that down. I'm going to actually change the UVs a bit. So that would be the... I think I would lower it on the X this way to drop it down. No. I would want to raise it up, I think. Let's try it and see. Yeah, so that dropped the uh, dot down a good bit. So I don't want to do it quite that low, so I'm just going to drag it back a little bit. Export one final time. And give it a try. Oh, that's a good bit closer. It could still come up a decent bit. Because it's still, if you just look kind of right at it, it's still a little bit low. Let's drop it down even farther. I really thought that would be about it. Two small amounts. Can I export like this? Okay, that's a little too high. And that's pretty close. Let's go down just a hair more. I didn't do much. Okay, so that's going to be where I'm going to leave it. We're pretty close to the center of the glass, and I'm satisfied with it. So, I'm... This is considering this my first, like, true, I guess, start-to-finish model and well, asset that I've really worked kind of hard on. I'm fairly happy with it. I think it turned out decent enough. So, that's, that's probably going to be where I end the video. I don't really have anything else to really say or do. I'm pretty much leaving this one here. Just going over it real quick to make sure I didn't like miss anything obvious. I think it came out pretty well. Not seeing any noticeable issues that come up. Yeah, that's it. Well, that took uh, quite a while. I don't even know how long it's been recording. So, 50 minutes, hour 32, 2 hours, 45 minutes, plus however long this one is, about 5 minutes. That's been a good amount of time, and I'm ready to be done, so I'm going to be done. Anyways, hopefully, I really doubt any of you guys actually watched it even remotely close to the end, but if you did, good job. And finish this with the same thing that I say at the end of just about every single video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find my Discord server down below. And this asset will be available for download. Uh, I'm only going to actually have it available in my Discord. So you have to join the Discord server, and it'll be under the uh, the assets channel, where I just release a lot of random crap. So, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed, because I did, I did not.
This was a lot of recording for this little thing. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Bye.